Hi, Nikki. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm so excited to chat all about emotional health, stress, trauma with you today. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. You're welcome. So I know that you first started off your practice specializing in chronic fatigue syndrome and those with complex health conditions. So what initially sparked that career change and then how has that transitioned into the work that you're doing today? Sure. So uh, I was in a completely unrelated career, um, like in chartered accounts in banking and realised that's a terrible profession <laughs> to be in. Or, sorry, being a bit judgmental. It wasn't right for me. I was a fish out of water. Um, so I, it was basically me discovering that I needed to do something with much more meaning and caring and working directly with other people. And I, I trained at the Institute for Optimal Nutrition and I, I met my partner and life partner and business partner around that time. And he really educated me around chronic fatigue because he had, had had CFS himself for seven years. And he was just recovering. Actually, he'd recovered when I met him. And he'd written a book. And I, we realized that it was a silent kind of, uh, I would say epidemic, but it was a silent, a lot of silent suffering happening and no real solutions. And conventional medicine is really not helping that group of people which is an expanding group and it's vastly undiagnosed as well. So perhaps it wasn't an epidemic really, fatigue is. So um, we, Alex had solutions. I was coming from a functional medicine nutrition perspective and we kind of got together, built that clinic to address the fatigue spectrum of um, imbalances. And um, it kind of exploded because there was this lack of support out there for what people needed, like real solutions. But we realized with illnesses like chronic fatigue, and there's definitely a hormonal aspect to that going on in, in that kind of chronic complex illness as well, we needed this mind and body approach because the mind and body are one thing. And what's going on in the psychology and the psyche is often just reflected in the biology. So we had a psychology division and a um, the nutrition div division. And that sort of grew up sort of over uh, five years. We had pr 20 practitioners, patients in 40 different countries and we won award for outstanding practice and things like this and we got published in the British Medical Journal a preliminary study so we're looking at both um, this concurrent approach that we needed so that's and then the next stage is I, I then realized um, emotional trauma emotional stress was a massive factor in chronic fatigue it's like the chronic fatigue is like the poster child for that um, but then I realized, though, it's the most underexposed risk factor for all chronic complex illnesses and, uh, you know, general health ailments, imbalances, you know, on that spectrum between not completely in a diagnosed disease state, just not feeling great and feeling out of balance and, you know, not feeling good, demotivated and kind of hormonal, shall we say. <laughs> so, um, so, yes. And then I, that's when we sort of transitioned a bit. And we said we really need to highlight what's happening with the emotional stress and trauma thing, which is, which is a true massive silent epidemic that we are out there trying to advocate to get people to realize that this is underlying the vast majority of chronic complex illness. And we don't have a good net definition yet of what trauma is and emotional stress. And we can talk more about that. I hope that makes sense. Definitely. And I think a lot of people do they're aware that stress does worsen the condition or it just makes everything worse. People hear about that, but I don't think they actually know or understand what you mean by stress. So I know that you said there's not like a, a definite term and it's a little bit different for everyone, but how would you kind of describe stress and trauma? What do you actually mean by that? Yeah. So stress is a wildly overused word. And most people, when we talk about stress, they kind of think, it's things like too many emails to answer and taking the kids to school and pressure and workload and things like that. That's stress for sure. And we've got this sort of quite a narrow understanding of the impact of stress that it, it triggers this cortisol response and, you know, the biological changes in the body that occur ready for us to go into fight flight to, you know, to, to deal with the, whatever the stress may be. Now that, People generally, I think there is widespread understanding that stress definitely, I mean, it kills, it reduces lifespan. But what people don't realize is that most of the stress that we have is actually, it's systemic and it's already wired into our system before we even get to adulthood. So, because we have an epidemic of what's called attachment and developmental trauma. Now, um, or definitely attachment trauma. So, let me just uh, sort of define this. So developmental trauma is anything that happens to you before age 18. And obviously developmental means it's trauma and stress that happens 
while we're still developing, while the brain is still developing. And what tends to happen in childhood is that if we have these stresses, we're literally, rather than just being a temporary state that we move out of, like we would in adulthood, those states become traits, they become our identity. So um, and that what people also don't realize is that the vast majority of trauma and emotional stress from childhood comes from our attachment relations. And that is the quality um, and the depth of the relations and the safety with our key caregivers, which is our parents most of the time, but, but not always. So um, a lot of people just think of trauma and they think of war zones and car accidents or an assault. That's a discrete event that people can get diagnosed for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's rare, it's pretty curable. The conventional mainstream medicine has a good thing. If you, if you suspect you have PTSD, get some EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and improved programming available on the NHS. So PTSD is, um, the symptoms would be definitely, you know, anxiety, mood changes, but often when anything that triggers you to remember something related to the event, the single event. With developmental trauma, it is when we don't get enough emotional validation, when we don't feel safe and validated as a child growing up, what happens is we start to internalize that and it basically causes autonomic um, imbalances. So it doesn't always mean stress, fight, flight response. There's something else called the freeze response where we basically have parts of our psyche, energy and biology that kind of goes into freeze state. And clearly that causes you know, biological imbalances as well. So, and the thing is, it's not a discrete event. So attachment trauma, you know, it happens every day. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, it's these, it's what I almost call it ambient trauma or ambient imbalance so it's you know chronically being verbally abused for example there's huge studies that have been done that show that attachment trauma has a massive impact on health across a lifetime but they they've included things like physical or emotional or sexual abuse physical or emotional neglect domestic violence in the family um, substance abuse parents separating or divorce how many of us have had that happen so it's this ambient sort of uh, relational impact that it has on us as, as children. And because the child self-protection mechanisms are, we, that attachment relationship is key to the child's survival. So we could never sort of demonize the parent and say it's the parent's fault. We are always going to turn it on ourselves and say, whatever's not going on good here with this relation, <laughs> it's my fault. And then that manifests into all kinds of things, addiction behaviors, um, over striving, over giving. Uh, it gets internalized into chronic anxiety. Um, it also causes freeze responses and attachment trauma freeze response. We're going to depression. Now, all of that change in the biochemistry absolutely impacts hormones as well. <laughs> and it will impact sex hormones. It will impact the adrenal hormones. Uh, in fact, it, interesting, we were just in the pre-interview, we were talking about weight gain. One of the uh, things that, there, there was a huge study done, I'll just mention, it was a big study done by Kaiser Permanente um, and the CDC in the US, 17,500 adults. And they found that looking at those, just those 10, which is, by the way, is not an exhaustive category of things. There's being a victim of homophobia, racism, you know, all kinds of things. Um, what they found is that if you had a high level of ACEs, adverse childhood experiences or events, you have a dram dramatic increased risk of seven out of the top 10 causes of death. You have a, a, a 20 year reduction in lifespan. Um, and you have a six fold increased risk of, of things like chronic fatigue. With just four of the ACEs, four of those adverse childhood events that I mentioned, you've got a 400% increased risk of depression, anxiety, things like bipolar, Alzheimer's, dementia, that whole sort of, you know, the mental imbalances. There's also a huge link, 200% increased risk of infertility. Um, diabetes is much higher. Cancer and heart disease are both linked. So with this kind of, uh, with these studies, 67% of adults, all adults have had that experience, at least, and that was an underestimate. The, the, the experts are saying that was a massive underestimate of the total number of people who've been exposed um, because the study was actually very superficial um, and they didn't really get to some of the things like emotional neglect 
you know, emotional neglect isn't an event, it's what didn't happen. And that's really hard to self-report. And we have an epidemic of that going on as well. So just that just shows you that, you know, our childhood biography becomes adult biology. The mind and the body are one thing. And what the data shows is that these experiences translate into our brains, into the nervous system, into the biochemistry, into our energy fields. And it basically causes us to, it becomes our identity and we go out into the world that way. And all kinds of health imbalances um, kind of come from that, including thyroid issues, um, Hashimoto's. There's a, if you're, if you have just two ACEs, you have a 100% increased risk of all, all autoimmunity. In fact, the correlation of early life stress for women is as strongly correlated as smoking is in lung cancer for adult onset autoimmunity like Hashimoto's, which could be one of the underlying causes mm -hmm. of obviously our thyroid issues. So people are sort of, it's an epidemic of lack of self-awareness <laughs> of not realizing that you might be a kind of person who's the uh, overachiever, overdriver, and not realizing that it was just an insufficient environment in your social environment has a massive impact on you. And then we internalize that stress and we're sort of walking stress balls. I think um, Eckhart Tolle called it the pain body. And we'll do anything to get away from that pain. But it not only directly affects the biochemistry right away, it also leads to behaviors that cause the biochemistry, sugar addictions, alcohol addiction, um, not being able to stick to a lifestyle plan that you know would work to balance your hormones, like circadian rhythm management, going to bed on time, doing exercise. You know, it, so it's a sort of uphill battle if we don't, we need this multifactorial approach, basically. Absolutely. Well, don't worry, everyone, we're going to be talking more about the solutions. Everyone's like, oh my God, sounds like me. Maybe this is a part of my kind of puzzle piece. I think it is for everyone, whether it's headaches that's the problem or autoimmunity I think there's always some sort of emotional energetic spiritual component and a lot of the listeners are already eating a great diet they're already exercising they're taking all the supplements and some of them are still symptomatic and sometimes it's even better just starting off with the mindset work because if not you can end up in those self-sabotaging behaviors like you said, you know, all, you know all the things that you should be doing, but you find yourself, quote, falling off the bandwagon every single month and you can't stick to a plan, even though you know it's going to benefit you in the long run. Yes, it's, it's really key. So one of the things that I'm focusing on quite a lot and educating other health professionals about at the moment is a condition called pyroluria that is mm -hmm. caused, you've heard of this. Yeah, is, I thought I had this at some point. <laughs> yes, now pyroluria is, it's a, it's a problem with heme production, which is the part of the hemoglobin that makes up in red blood cells, basically. It's the iron containing part of red blood cells. And basically stress will cause these pathways, these heme production pathways to, to get blocked. And it basically causes a shunt of certain biochemicals into the urine. And these chemicals will steal your um, vitamin B6, your zinc, and your manganese and some biotin and throw some iron in there just for good measure so it, so you get the emotional stress that triggers the pyroluria you then get chronically deficient in those nutrients now that has a plethora of effect but effects but one of the top things is if you get b6 deficient that there's so many neurotransmitters serotonin dopamine uh, uh noradrenaline um gaba that actually are, need B6. So that's where uh, we start to go a bit crazy and this is where the mood swings start. So, um, you know, we need dopamine for sort of get up and go and motivation, very important to have dopamine to do that compliance, the risk reward part of us that makes us wanna go and do things, have motivation. Serotonin, the feel good neurotransmitter. GABA is, makes us feel calm and serene. You know, if you start to get depleting all those things, that's when you start to feel the dread. And by the way, it compounds anything you might have had from, you know, fear and trauma that are actually in the psyche. This is biochemical, you know, compounding of those things. You're losing zinc means low stomach acid, you know, iron, you're getting into fatigue. Um, there's so many impacts. It's going to impact on hormones for sure as well. It's going to lead to um, uh, imbalances in your hormones, not producing them properly. Malabs you'll get a malabsorption issue of issues with other nutrients. So, the pyroluria, I'm picking that up because I think it's, it's probably the mechanism 
I should mention as well, B6 zinc and things like this are also needed for something called methylation in the body. And methylation, just don't worry about that, it's just a really important process of the body that allows us to detox. It also impacts neurotransmitters again, but it's, and it also, zinc, we obviously need zinc for the immune system, right? So emotional stress causes a pyloria, then we lose all the nutrients. That is setting us up for things like hormone imbalances, but also gut problems, malabsorption, chronic fatigue syndrome. Now you're building up heavy metals as well because you need the zinc and iron and uh, magnesium and things to keep heavy metals pushed out. Once you have heavy metals building up, then it's leading onto things like uh, opportunistic, in uh, opportunistic infections. Now we're looking at the Lyme profile, so uh, which is vastly probably missed and undiagnosed in people as well. So it's this uh, important kind of cascading uh, impact of things that happens. The good news is we can reverse all this. <laughs> that was, I, was, I was explaining the biochemistry so that people understand why the solutions work, right? That's which we can talk about. <laughs> yeah. Solutions. We can reverse exactly. everything. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, everyone. We will get there. But I just wanted to ask as well um, with where do you start with all of these things? Do you start with the basics um, or do you jump right into like limiting beliefs, traumas, um, or a little bit of both simultaneously? Because a symptom like fatigue could just be due to a basic iron deficiency, like you said, or it could be due to an unresolved emotional trauma. So how do you approach this with your clients? Okay, the actual order that you do things is really personalized to the person because everyone's really different. I can give you a, a few sort of tips though. Certainly in clinical practice, I, would, I actually do start with people where I can, looking into neurotransmitters because um and somebody who's great on this is actually trudy scott and you can look up her website and there's articles she'll have um but neurotransmitters where things like actually supporting things like gaba in the uk you'd need theanine for example so uh, and to give something called pea for boosting dopamine these are natural things that you can take um so 5-htp to boost serotonin so i do if i can and i'll bring that in early as, as long as somebody can and on any um psych meds and that would need to be tested and kind of in case there were any contraindications um but we actually I, I do go in and bring in neurotransmitters because it just helps people feel better sooner it helps them stay compliant you know so i would look into that and then we want to get to these underlying nutrient deficiencies now with pyroloria we can start supplementing b6 zinc manganese some iron and we start to rebuild and reconnect and rebuild everything one of the issues is you will start clearing out things like heavy metals and possible even opportunities of this, you know, infections, mold could be another thing as well. So you could be some dealing with some detox. So people say, oh, I'm feeling worse and rather better. Yes, you're detoxing. Um, but whether somebody needs to do long term supplementation or not, some pyroloria is genetic. There is a subgroup where it's genetic. And so you want long term supplementation. Um, but for others who it's not genetic, it's stress induced. Um, you want to replete the nutrients. You do need to address that side. But um, you, if you want to stay free of pyroluria and not fall into that trap of getting B6 deficient and your periods are out of whack and everything else, you do need to then address the other side, which is to, to resolve the emotional trauma. The good news, this is really good news, by the way. We can heal the whole thing. We can, we can heal the biochemical imprint that the trauma is left. The emotional stress caused the pyroluria and all that stuff. Just get the nutrients in it, start reversing it. Uh, might need some neurotransmitter help because people are feeling all over the place. Um, but and we might need to deal with some detox for some people, not everybody. But in terms of how do you deal with the, the kind of the trauma itself and emotional imbalance, the other impact that trauma has is on the nervous system. And we do need to spend time stimulating the vagus nerve, which is the rest, digest, detoxify, feed, breathe side of the nervous system. And if that is out of whack, it's hard to maintain or to get good results just doing biochemical work alone. So we do need to address the nervous system. There's tons of ways to stimulate the vagus nerve. Um, some of the surface ways of doing it are kind of deep breathing, yoga, tai chi, meditation, chanting, singing, positive social relations. Most psychotherapists have, will raise your heart rate variability, which is a test of vagal tone as well. 
Um, so there's actually lots of ways and you'll want to build those things into your lifestyle. So it, it's not something you, vagus nerve stimulation isn't something you do for like, how long do I do this for before I can just stop? It's like, how long do you eat vegetables for to be healthy? <laughs> like forever, it's a way of life. So you build those things in. I have a thing where I get people to do a miracle morning where they can maybe do three things in the morning that sets their vagus t um, tone up. So maybe some gratitude journaling, bit of breathing, bit of meditation first thing in the morning. Um, so, so vagus nerve, and I'll give people a tip as well. There is actually, people have said, do I know about a vagus nerve stimulating device at all? Um, I did, I found one that's actually really good, especially anybody interested in for weight, uh, weight issues as well. It's called Modius Health. I have no financial affiliation with it. Modius, M-O-D-I-U-S, health.com. And how it works is it's, it connects beautifully with an iPhone. It's very well researched and very well made. It's affordable as well in the sense that it's about 500 pounds. Most of them are like either thousands or, or just not available, only on prescription and things. So this was the first time I found one that was actually uh, affordable. And it connects to little, it's behind your ears and it stimulates the vestibular nerve, which in turn stimulates the vagus nerve. Now, it, the vagus nerve will increase stomach acid production. It will increase motility. So you will start digesting food better. It improves absorption because of that. And the other thing it does, it will help stop this kind of trigger happy stress response so that our overall cortisol levels, if they're too high, they'll start to come down, which is why the Modius device is sold as a weight loss device. Um, but actually, I, I don't have it. It's just called the Modius Slim. Um, and this is how stress, which translates into low vagal tone, causes weight gain. So when we are stressed all the time and our nervous system is too easily triggered, because that's one of the things that happens with chronic stress from childhood, we, we have a lowered threshold response. Like anything, will, we're really triggered really easy. So we're always with high cortisol. High cortisol causes an insulin release, which will in turn, insulin is a fat storage hormone. So if we're in spike flight, you hold on to the... Um, the fat actually and that's linking back to something i just wanted to mention which i forgot to mention that huge kaiser permanente study started in an obesity clinic and what they found is that by mistake tons of the people in the obesity clinic uh, were, were doing really well losing weight and then they would just drop off the program and so they wanted to investigate why that was happening and then they found out there was a really high level of sexual abuse that had occurred in childhood and then one woman summed it up they surveyed her and she said, uh, being overweight was a protection mechanism against unwanted attention, male attention. So that's another way that early life stress and trauma um, impacts our psyche. If, we, if it's a threat to lose weight, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we need to address. So that's just the link, by the way, of how the Kaiser Permanente linked with, with obesity as well. Um, so where was I? Going back to um, simulating the vagus nerve. So we want to do that every day the rest digest detoxify uh, the modius device is just an hour a day connects to your iphone you can do other things be on your computer um it will improve sleep as well which the vagus nerve digestion it's they're selling it as a weight loss device but the vagus nerve does so many things they had to just pick something <laughs> to market it under um but so it so it will help balance the vagus nerve and this is an important thing the vagus nerve in general, starting to feel a sense of safety, calmness and balance in the body. So you've got the neurotransmitters that could help that and you start to bring in the nutrients, then you're doing daily exercises, then you're bringing in device to help as well. So it's all starting to heal. And then the last piece is just the pure sort of psychology. And um, in terms of like dealing with somebody, for example, who feels threatened by being too thin and getting the wrong attention, and clearly that's, you know, that's traumatic trauma that would need to be helped with uh, probably possibly professional help. Um, my favorite, one of my fa favorite therapies at the moment is sound therapy. Um, because if you think about where does trauma, where does emotional trauma sit in the body, it leaves a biochemical imprint and it leaves a neurological imprint. But if you like get a neuron and cut it up, like where's the memory of that? Where are memories stored, right? They've never found it in the neurons or in the synapses between the neurons. They've never find, found it, right? <laughs> what they found is most likely that is our memories and trauma are stored in the field around the body, uh, in the, the field created by all the neurons firing together. So that's where things like 
pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, where you do brain entrainment work, can actually clear trauma. Um, so any kind of frequency and resonance therapy can literally um, change the way our field is oscillating, because we do have an electromagnetic field around the heart. You might have heard through heart math, they have a heart rate, heart rate variability and we have a big kind of torus shaped field around the body and it's got a frequency. So we can use frequency medicine to heal the energy field, which in turn helps the nervous system and the biochemistry. I'm not ruling out talk therapy, by the way. You know, psychotherapy definitely is appropriate. It can be part of the picture, depending on the trauma. Um, so that can help as well. But I tend to, for trauma, really, a lot of the talk, a lot of people tell you the talk therapy is not the most effective. There are drawbacks to talk therapy. So we can talk about some more therapies as well. But I'll just let you ask anything you want to ask. <laughs> yeah, I could let you talk all day. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. Um, so the kind of energetic field outside of the body i'm guessing that's what practices like reiki also work on as well would you think that they're an effective way to help with this emotional release i think some people yes like so i think some are a little bit more powerful than others everybody's different though so you know somebody could go and have a reiki session and have a massive release one of the things when we what you could call trauma trauma is like it because it's something at the time if you think about what a trauma is um, trauma specifically including in childhood or um, it can be it's where we didn't have the capacity to process the information at the time it was too threatening so what we do is we shunt it away and we're actually protected from it and it gets encapsulated um, and that can actually happen within the energy field as well so we have a sort of a heavy frequency of it'll be kind of stuck in our field kind of a bit you could say it's sort of talk, talking esoterically of kind of a, t a tear in the aura you could almost talk about it like that more of the, the biofield experts we talk about it more like incoherence in the energy field where the resonance the, there's a dissonance in the energy field or incoherence and that causes energy blocks blocks in the meridian flow energetic flow for that's you know kind of in chinese medicine blockages and that in turn causes issues of the biochemistry as well on the biochemical level as well so that's really why you need to get to the root cause if we connect if we correct just the biochemistry and don't get to the energy body where it's sitting that trauma you'll have to you'll keep getting out of balance right and then you have to keep coming back or you'll cure one thing and you get something else because you didn't get to the true root cause so when we clear the energy field when we raise the frequency of the energy field by clearing out the dissonance and the incoherence in the field um, and we'll talk about a few more ways we can do that, that suddenly we get an energetic clearance and an energetic flow. And it's really the state and the, clear, the how balanced and clear your energy field is defines how you think and feel. So you can't have lots of positive, high, enthusiastic thoughts if your energy field is full of the blockages and still holding that trauma and you've got part of your field in freeze response because you couldn't deal with it at the time. Now, the, the energetic approaches are great because they're not re-traumatizing. You don't have to go back and revisit and remember everything. You can just work on it directly in the energy field. You might get some strange dreams. Um, you might feel emotions that you, as we start to clear things, you sort of emotions come up, you feel sad or depressed or for a few days, not knowing why you're having those emotions. But that's how the release happens. That's emotional detoxing. That's how emotional detoxing works. So the energy field is really my, my focus where I spend a lot of time. I don't just do that because we want to get people feeling better with the biochemistry and we've got to get the nervous system balanced. But we want to um, kind of shake up, shake out the, 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 um, the imbalance in the frequency in the field as well. So I've used that. You could do this with sound therapy, anything which has got uh, sort of waves which means we're now working with resonance. It's not molecular, obviously. So waves, if you think about an opera singer when she sings, she can shatter a glass, right? Well, that's happening through resonance. That's happening with oscillation, which is it's a sine wave. So that's what we do to break up um, dissonant and incoherent sort of the blobs in the energy field, if you like. And you could do that with pulse electromagnetic field therapy. You could do it with light therapy. And you can do it with sound therapy and they all have a similar they all work on the same principles so i spend a lot of time teaching people how to do biofield uh, tuning biofield tuning therapy so using tuning forks 
So you can use a tuning fork and you put it over your solar plexus and you can use intention to, to intend to start clearing emotions from the energy field. And people are carrying a ton of stuff that they didn't know they had. Rage, um, depression, from that incident that happened 20 years ago, still holding on to it, um, could have uh, just judgment, self-hatred is much more common than people want to face up to because um, they need to protect those attachment relations so they think there's something wrong with them, so their self-hatred comes up. Um, powerlessness, think about anxiety, fear. So all of this is being held in the field and what we want to do is we want to oscillate all that stuff out and then the people's frequency and their vibration starts to rise this might have a little bit of a kundalini rising in the process <laughs> um there's some there are other therapies i must mention network spinal analysis which is a um chiropractic approach energetic approach where they actually work on clearing out the energy flow down the spine and that's very interesting because it's a bit like uh, giving a big push of energy through a blocked tunnel and the push of energy just clears the tunnel out and all the all the blockages get cleared and the person's suddenly like oh I feel great again and then you start to have positive thoughts because the field is your field actually um, perceives reality before the brain does and people don't realize that that's the, the electromagnetic field around the heart perceives what's happening a split second before the brain and there are actually more nerves sending messages up to the brain from the heart than vice versa. And people don't realize that. So that's why the field and the heart and working on the energy side is really important. Interestingly, by the way, I mentioned EMDR, eye movement sensitization. That's for PTSD, conventional. That's an energy psychology. So it's not talk therapy. It's breaking up energy fields um, through eye movements. So emotional freedom technique is energy psychology. So the future of trauma resolution and healing emotional stress is, is going to be much more energetic based than it was talk therapy, but we need to address neurology and the biochemistry to make people actually, you know, transform their lives, basically. I like that you've mentioned some free, easy, accessible things like the tapping, so EFT, there's videos, there's books, so that's very beneficial and a lot of people, they swear by that in really in the moment bringing a stress from a 10 out of 10 down to a 5 out of 10 just doing yeah. round after round of that so highly recommend that as well and then there's obviously some paid therapies that you've just been talking about so i think you've listed some good options another one i wanted to talk about is meditation so yeah. i think a lot of people have heard about the benefits of meditation some people are still on the fence it's usually those with the monkey mind who they probably benefit the most but they're the most resistant to actually doing that do you feel like it's a, a positive one or is that just more for stress management it's not really going to help with the if there's like been a serious trauma in the past yeah it's actually contraindicated for some people ah, so okay. it's been it's been sold as a bit of a panacea and it's not and if you can't meditate let's say your anxiety gets worse you've got that gets worse with your monkey mind and you've really tried to do it um, you know, you're really active. You might have gone on a week, you know, retreat, a silent retreat, tried and just couldn't do it. It's not the right thing for you right now. And there's other things that you need to focus on. So one of the things is you might have had trauma in childhood and you've got all these biochemical imbalances and you're trying to meditate while you've got serotonin through the floor, your dopamine's disappeared, you know, your gather's out of balance, you're in a sort of a bit of an emotional wreck, feeling like you're um, sort of a bit on the bipolar side, which is vastly probably undiagnosed as well. You know, um, so you've got all these things that make it difficult. Um, so a biochemical imbalances that make it difficult can make it difficult. The other side is if somebody is has had bad trauma, they will have done things to protect themselves to get their consciousness has actually left the body a little bit, and they don't want to feel what's in the body because it doesn't feel safe and it won't feel good. So um, for some people, that's where there's two things. Somebody might actually need to go and get some EMDR for discrete events. Remember EMDR is for discrete events. So um, we don't want to create app reactions and things. So go and seek therapy. The other thing is a lot of us disassociate and we can't feel our bodies. And actually meditation is not great for that because you're still kind of a bit, it's still disassociating. It's not body work. So one of the best thing, if someone is, over, and you might relate to this, if you're an over intellectualizer, you intellectualize everything, including your feelings or you just don't really feel anything. You don't really know how to exactly what you're feeling and haven't really realized that. That's a sign of childhood emotional neglect, by the way. Um, the best thing for you to do is get focused on body work. So go for yoga. 
uh, maybe try some Tai Chi, um, try out some Feldenkrais therapy if you want to go down the therapy route. So grounding, time in nature, get your feet on the floor, sleep with an earthing sheet, get grounded into your body and practice that. Do breathing into the body. And what that will do is you'll feel much more grounded. And that in turn is actually, they say yoga is preparation for meditation. So, you know, and on the other hand, some people are actually too much in their body and they need to meditate. And so it works for them. But don't beat yourself up or feel worse if you've not managed to master meditation. Uh, you know, maybe you've got a ton of things you need to do before then. Maybe you need the, maybe you need the help with the Modius device. Maybe you've got some of these nutrient deficiencies. You need some neurotransmitter support. Um, or, you, you know, you've got imbalances because of, of nutrient deficiencies. So, yeah. Um, so meditation, not for everybody. Good for some people. There's a lot of research showing it. it if you can do it, it has really good results <laughs> on the brain. Yeah, <laughs> I think people it. were like, thank you for saying that because they've been trying to sit in the meditation area every single day and it's just actually making them more stressed and more anxious. <laughs> so people will be thanking yeah. you that you've given them some alternatives as well because it is important and don't rule everything out because maybe you tried Reiki once and had a bad experience or went to a yoga class and didn't like it. There's a whole world out there of options. Yes. A couple of things, really practical things just for people to know about as well. If you sense that mood imbalances and things are an issue for you and, and it sort of often goes hand in hand sometimes when people have hormone imbalances as well, um, there's a couple of things that make a massive difference that all psychotherapists should know about. One is, and you must have covered it on your podcast before, but having a diet that manages your blood sugar control is fundamental and it can change people's lives. We don't want to miss the basics. Like, so a diet to manage your blood sugar control and know how to do that. I'm sure you've covered this on yeah, your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much every podcast, but there's some specific ones that we did on um, the root causes of anxiety. So we mentioned that. That was like number one. <laughs> yes. So blood sugar control. Have, have you covered circadian rhythm management yes. as well? Yes. So that was with so um, someone called Andy Mant. We talked, he has a blue light blocking glasses company. So he was talking right. about like blocking the blue lights from devices, getting outside in sun so important yeah these are things like so getting up uh, and getting bright sunlight first 30 minutes of waking get a sad lamp 40 bucks or 40 quid or something on on amazon for, get bright light first 30 minutes on waking um get as much do your activity or physical activity during the day and get out in sunshine and sunlight as much as you can during the day go to campfire light at night don't eat three hours before bed if you can for blood sugar so avoid eating too late. Just come to bed a little earlier, maybe 9, 10 p.m. rather than 12. Have a complete darkness at night. Um, switch off all the EMFs and the Wi-Fi at night. Make sure you're not sleeping with your iPhone on mm. anywhere near you. Yeah. All of that stuff is the blood sugar control, um, circadian. So it's basically sleep, blood sugar control, and pooping. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you can't forget that one. <laughs> yeah, those, those are some of the basics. Uh, there's a friend of mine, Andrea Nakayama, she calls those the non-negotiables. Like you'll discover there's more than that as well. So some of these lifestyle changes that will, you'll notice some of them, and I'm highlighting them because they people can do that now and it could change their lives if they did that now. You know, do a protein shake for breakfast. Don't skip breakfast, get the protein in. If you start building all these things in, uh, do the vagus nerve stimulation, bring that in in the morning as well. So design your morning to kind of, the mornings are important, but this will balance you during the rest of the day. And that will help you be able to do the other work, like processing emotions or, or having the energy to kind of do energetic work as well. So, um, yeah, I wanted to give people more pr uh, practical things. I was just thinking other, other vagus nerve stimulators, essential oils are great. Mm -hmm. They mood supporters and um, help balance hormones directly. And they, and, you know, with even with weight loss, um, but they will stimulate the vagus nerve as well. Um, fasting, actually, if people are into a little bit of intermittent fasting, if you don't eat three hours before bed, that's a type of intermittent fasting. So you're doing that easily right there. Um, I've mentioned exercise as well. But, you know, let's recognize it's difficult for, it's hard to, to get out of bed and do stuff if you have got this severe nutrient deficiency without realizing that it's screwing up all your neurotransmitters. And the most that you feel like doing is, you know, lying in bed in your pajamas all day. <laughs> it's really hard to, you know, so it's people, I'm all for giving people as much help on every level that we can for them. We need to look at both things simultaneously. There's the people who just 
do all the meditation, been to therapy for 30 years, but are eating terribly. They're not sleeping. They're not taking care of themselves physically. And then there's the people who are eating perfect organic diets, they're taking hundreds of pounds worth of supplements every month, but they're neglecting the mental and emotional side. So I want everyone to realize whatever you're dealing with, you need to look at both of these things simultaneously and that will massively speed up the um, the progress that you're going to receive. This is this is the you are ta- you are at the you, the evolution of the next stage of medicine when you talk about that. We've got conventional medicine, which is obviously failing a lot of people. We've got the kind of functional nutrition side that we're we're in and mm-hmm. that you're in, I guess. Yeah. And the next evolution is understanding the mind and the body are one thing. Like that ACEs study that I mentioned, you know, where you have if you have a high level of ACEs, you have a dramatic increased risk of seven out of ten of the top ten causes of death. If you, there's one takeaway from that is that the mind and the body are one thing. Professor Bessel van der Kolk, who's the world leading expert on trauma, he's the best selling New York Times best selling author. His book is called The Body Keeps the Score, which means that your biography in childhood, how safe you felt inside, how um, emotionally recognized, validated, and supported you were. Uh, and, ob- and then the obvious, you know, how was there bullying? Was there verbal abuse? Was there any kind of physical abuse? Was there just no emotional bonding at, at a young age? And did you sense something that could have happened early on as well? A lot of it can happen precognitively, by the way, before age four. Um, that kind of stuff changes the biochemistry and changes the neurology and changes the psyche. So, um, and the body remembers. The body it doesn't heal; it conceals. So, and it's, you know, 20, 30 years down the line, you suddenly get one more stressor and boom, you've got the autoimmunity, you've got the whatever has suddenly surfaced. It actually started, probably could have started in utero because we know a lot of the impacts of psychological stress and toxins that mum has gets passed on to baby. So um, there's a couple of books that I would recommend to people, by the way, um, who want to explore more about this. Um, Bessel van der Kolk's book, The Body Keeps the Score, he talks about developmental trauma, the difference between PTSD, goes through a lot of different therapies. Um, it's, a, it's a best-selling book and it's a great one. Uh, there's a great book on emotional neglect called Really Accessible, Easy to Read, called um, Running on Empty by Dr. Johnny Squared, which is an expert in childhood emotional neglect. Um, just thinking if there's any others. Uh, complex PTSD from thriving, surviving to thriving. Um, it's the top selling book on Amazon. I'll have to remember the, the author's name. Um, it's a really good book as well. Um, and I'm thinking if those are probably a c- couple of the good ones to start with. Um, if you are particularly, oh, there's one other I'll mention. Deve- Healing Deve- Developmental Trauma by Dr. Lawrence Heller. Developmental Trauma by Lawrence Heller. He's got a really interesting um, sort of adaptive styles he talks about. He's got five adaptive styles where it encapsulates what are the most common uh, attachment trauma type of things that happen. And it actually maps to a personality typing system called the Enneagram system. I don't know if people have heard of the, mm-hmm. the Enneagram system, the nine personality types. Basically, if we feel like we have a self-love deficit because of attachment trauma, we, 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 have, we feel like we have to earn love. So we do things like we become type one perfectionists. So if we just get everything right, then we'll get the love that we need. So that's the perfectionist type one, Enneagram type. That's, it's also in the developmental trauma book by Dr. Heller. Um, another one is the giver type, type two on the Enneagram. And that's where we didn't get the love unconditional. So what we learn to do is that when we give to others, then we get the love. Um, but then we become overgivers and then it's never ending giving. And then we get burnt out because we're overgiving loads of therapists uh givers <laughs> the giver types tons of us are all the giver types um moms a lot of uh, the, the you know the very caring types often giver types trauma from childhood i'm afraid um there's also the achiever types the people who can't stop and slow down and they've got to have a lot of signs of having value in the world and achieving the, the achiever types these are all the types by the way who are totally under that with chronic illness and chronic fatigue right burnout this is fast track to burnout um so those were some of the big ones and also what we call the anxiety type as well, which is the kind of very fearful, security seeking, worried about the floor kind of opening up at any moment um, and kind of them falling in. Never given a sense of groundedness and trust and a sense of safety that they could trust their, themselves and their own opinions. So these are all the signs and symptoms to say, hmm, 
that might sound like me, or that might sound like somebody I know. Um, those are some of the signs um, of attachment trauma, and it's really prevalent. <laughs> it's probably, I don't think there's hardly anyone who doesn't have a degree of it. So um, this is the next evolution. What we're trying to do is get the functional medicine community to start to have some more awareness about this, and this will also help people's nervous systems regulate. It will help clear the energy field when they deal with the sort of unresolved emotions that are there related to that. And then it will change the biochemistry as well. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a journey and um, it can be, it doesn't have to be terrible, that journey, this journey to self-discovery. Um, it can, you know, it can be confronting to see the truth about ourselves, um, but it's totally worth it in the end because it's emotional mastery and freedom, basically we're talking about, we are talking about total freedom here ultimately with emotional mastery. And if you truly meet, reach emotional mastery, the, phys the physical body has to come good too. There's nothing more important than that at the end of the day. Agreed. And is the Enneagram, am I right, that that isn't like an online quiz? I'm sure I've done that in the past. I want to redo yeah. it now and just listen to see what um, type I am on there. But is that like an online quiz? Yes, you can go yeah. to enneagraminstitute.com and perhaps you can put that in the show yeah, notes. Yeah, I'll put all of the books, all of the resources, links that you've mentioned in the show notes for everyone to go directly to and click. Great. Yeah, it's actually, you don't have to do the quiz. I think it's a paid quiz for $15, but you don't have to do the quiz. You just can read the types and learn by learning the types and you'll go, okay. hmm, that sounds like me. So um, the Enneagram Institute and the books that they bring out are the, are the ones that we work with anyway and the best sort of, there are some others as well that are very good, but that's a good start. And you have the yeah. ACEs quiz on your website as well? Yes, if people want to actually tot up their ACEs, um, just on my website, nikigratrix.com, I've still got a tab at the top, top called ACE score. And I go through just the, the sort of superficial questions they asked in, in the original study. And then we do the extended questionnaire, which is getting to the more subtle sort of questions that get it, go a little bit deeper. But um, I also recommend John East's, John East Webb's web, John East Webb's website, which has, <laughs> I think you, can, you can either get her book or on her website. It, it's good to look up the, the symptoms of emotional neglect because that it's very precise. It's not actually necessarily about trauma, but signs of emotional neglect. And that's a good um, quiz questionnaire to do in addition as well. So we're giving to people tons of resources. I hope it's not, I hope they see it more as like an opportunity to look at all these different things rather than feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm like, oh, I, I want to find as much as I can out about myself. Um, I don't know if it's my pers personality type. I don't know if that means something, but <laughs> I will be doing all of those quizzes, reading the books, because I just think it's so important to educate yourself because we're told, aren't we, that emotional neglect is just things like physical abuse and being left without food for days and people think oh no that's nothing that I've ever dealt with and then they just overlook the fact that they were bullied that their parents were moving around a lot I mean they weren't in a stable home um so yeah very important and I know opening for a lot of people and this is it a lot of people you could have been this is the most common story is like it like you'll know if you've you know generally you'll know if you've had some of the physical abuse and verbal abuse and bullying and things like that but it can also just be well-meaning parents who don't actually have the capacity of themselves to be emotionally bonded because they didn't get it from their parents. So this type of trauma is intergenerationally passed down um, or emotional neglect is. And I, I actually do, I do classify that as trauma. Probably Johnny Smith wouldn't, but I do because you lose yourself. If you don't, if you connect, when emotional neglect leads to not knowing yourself and your own emotions. And your emotions are you. They, they help define what your boundaries are, what your needs are, what job you go into. Um, they are a source of connection to your soul and spirituality. It's through feeling, not thinking. So it, it's kind of this, you know, kind of Pandora's box that we've ignored. And we don't, haven't valued these things in society. We've got IQ. And it wasn't until Robert, Gold, uh, uh, Jonathan Goldman or... Goldman said it's it, it, what about emotional intelligence and this is something we've not been good as as a, as a society it's like we're talking about emotional intelligence so you can be healthy by the way physically and have balanced hormones it's like we need to have this connection to our emotions and to know what we're feeling and what is the message you know emotions are always true they're not always right like we don't always want to act on them because you know if you've got rage and you feel like killing somebody <laughs> that's you know but it's the truth about the situation to you and so this is very important 
and it's a dro- running on empty is Johnny's book you know so that's how we feel inside like empty if you don't have this inner core of connection so um yeah and I was just I was going to mention that um yeah that we we sort of intellectualized everything and in childhood we could have parents very well-meaning parents who drove us everywhere looked after us physically you know meals on the great cooking you know driven everywhere we wanted to if we went to the gym we you know we did sports parents were always there but never actually checked in with emotionally how you were doing emotionally or asked how are you feeling today and not thought to ask that because they were never asked that as a you know as a, a child either so they wouldn't even to know what to do with that even if you <laughs> sort of asked them to start asking they were clueless so that's the sort of thing as well that we're talking about here emotional neglect um have a big impact on us as well so it's that side it's it's a silent epidemic that's happening too so we're trying to raise awareness about this as well and then get our functional medicine practitioners clued up on the emotional side and the psychology community realizing just how much there is to offer from functional nutrition as well because it's massive also molecular psychology and all that side of things big deal I just want to quickly ask as well if there's anyone any parents that are listening who are like oh my god I've messed my kids up because maybe they had something like depression and they weren't able to like emotionally take care of the child for a while or they divorced the husband a few years back and had this big row and they're scared that it's like affected the child is there any different therapies that are more child friendly or is it kind of just the same things right you talk about how do we address parents or the children yeah so if a, a parent thinks that the child's been affected emotionally by the um kind of behaviors is there anything yeah. that, the ch- that they can do for the children to prevent like any future health issues developing? Yeah, you, m- you might need to get h- sort of help and therapy with the child. A lot of things that we've talked about would apply to children as well, like eating a diet of blood sugar mm. control, absolutely. Um, circadian rhythm, absolutely. Some of these things, energy work, definitely for kids. Um, but what I would say probably for pe- mostly for parents, number one, no blame, no shame, no judgment involved with what happened you've done the best that you could there's no manual you get right and your parents didn't give you the tools to do it so no self judgment no self blame about whatever may have happened in the past um the top thing you can do for your kids though if if you're still a parent and they're still kids the top thing you can do is resolve your own trauma Mm -hmm. it is work on yourself it is the message to the parents are there's no point kind of you sort of verbally communicating with a kid it's like talk therapy doesn't really work you can tell a kid you don't need to feel that way well so what they feel that how are you going to change it that words don't change you know the biochemistry the neurology and that's causing their behavior right words aren't enough it, what's going on with the child is more than that so that's the same a child is in, are they are incredibly intuitive and they are watching your body language and they're picking up on the emotions that you might not even be feeling yourself that's driving the tone of your voice for example so um the, the very best thing a parent could do is become congruent with what you're saying to your child you can only do that if you've resolved your own neuroses so if you if you kind of become aware of your own patterns and start to address those and are then you want to be the standard like you don't want to just tell the kid you know be like this knowing full well you're not that and you don't express that and you're not living it so it's it's demanding but that is the best thing that parents can do is is um be the standard with their kids and then that's the best way kids learn is like modeling like they'll you know monkey see monkey do mimicking um and the kids uh, the kids will absorb the emotional energy that's being held by the parent constantly and they will be the empath kids you've got empath kids they'll be absorbing all your stuff that you that you haven't resolved so that's why the best thing you can do is um, take care of yourself like if you if you're putting yourself out your giver type constantly giving yourself away to the kids to the point where you're emotionally drained um so the big message is like parents, you've got to have time out. You've got to have your, ho- your own holiday time. Invest in having a cleaner if you can. <laughs> you know, invest in getting support um, so that you get time out and some freedom to look after yourself. You're doing your kids a service with that. You're doing them a disservice if you don't care- take care of yourself. And that's, it's a bit, it's the old oxygen mask on yourself before you give it to the child. But you can't, I can't tell you how much we need to keep reinforcing that to get the guilt out it's like there's a big guilt thing and that's to do with self-worth issues and do we deserve it and do we really have self-hatred and that's back to attachment trauma that's how it plays out so um yeah but the beauty is there's so much so much low-hanging fruit with all this um there's loads of stuff people can do um yeah and it's life-changing 
Yeah, and that's a perfect way to wrap up. I do want to finish with a couple of questions for you personally. So I want to know something that you're into lately. This could be in relation to health, in relation to something completely random. Yeah. Uh, I would say I, I'm well into sound therapy and biofield yeah. tuning. That's mm -hmm. my thing at the moment because it's one of the nicest ways to, you can do it at home and you can clean out your energy field. Um, and I've got guided meditations that I create. So kind of music, it's like essential oils are like a really pleasant thing to do. It's not just a boring supplement, right? It's like an enjoyable lifestyle thing. Music and sound can heal the emotional body. And um, so I'm into that. <laughs> and are things like the sound baths or binaural beats, is that in the same category? But a sound bath, so you see them exploding, definitely. Uh, you'll see them starting to really healing people through resonance for sure. Binaural beats are in work with entrainment as well, brain entrainment. Um, so yeah, I think sound therapy is good, is the next massive therapy. Um, and yeah, in a couple of months time, I'll be launching my emotional detox program and I teach people how to do biofield tuning on themselves. Um, and I do like an assessment. Yeah. I'll, I'll do an assessment for people and I'll say, right, you've got these neurotransmitters are out of balance. What's going on with you? Do you have mold? Do you have heavy metals? What nutrient differences, what food intolerances do we need to address any hormones? And then I go through and I also, I'm able to help people work out what emotions they need to work on and how many hours of biofield tuning they need to work on on which emotions so that's down the line probably launching it in a couple of months like the uh, emotional detox program <laughs> yeah, yeah so i'll have to keep there. my eye on that for myself <laughs> actually on my on my website which just says well it's a gift for people i've got a, a self-love meditation which is beautifully guided with music with it's also in so it's working through entrainment the music's working through entrainment it's also uh, so brain in training it's getting into alpha brainwave states it's also kind of hit a type of hypnotic because as we're talking, the words are going in and repro reprogramming the unconscious negative belief, beliefs and thoughts as well. So, and it's also, it's taking people on a journey to the, their core selves and how they got disconnected from themselves. And it, people, I get amazing testimonials from that. And it's completely, it's worth 30 bucks, but people can download it at the moment for free from my website. So it's the self-love meditation. It's music therapy to heal attachment trauma people are welcome to sign up you could basically sign up to my newsletter you get the the free meditation it's like a 20 minute 30 minutes total 20 minutes while i'm talking so check it out but yeah reminders of your website and if you're on social media as well where can people find you uh easiest thing is just nikigratrix.com n-i-k-i-g-r-a-t-r-i-x.com and if people do get that when i've got my full detox program if people are interested well, they'll be notified later great and before my very last question, um, what's one thing you do every day to stay in hormonal harmony? The mode is health device. Mm. I do an hour. Yeah, I've day. never heard of that. That sounds so interesting. Yeah, it's uh, so vagus nerve stimulator. It's stimulating the vestibular nerve. You'll see. It's, there's a lot of research on the website, and it's an Irish neuroscientist that created it. It was GoFundMe. I think it was two million dollars they raised to create cool. the device. And so it was a lot of research and energy went into it. And it works beautifully with an iPhone. And yeah, check it out. Mm. I have no financial affiliation. Yeah, they've got all the funding because everyone's in need of like digestive support and um, stress relief, at, like the multi multiple different benefits in one, it sounds like. Yeah. Definitely. And finally, tell us a bit more about the Trauma Summit that's been released on Monday. So Monday the 29th of June. Where can people find that? What can they expect from the summit? Yeah. So this is a mega event. I think it's going to be one of the biggest events of the year. Oh my gosh, we've got, yes. Yeah, we've got, um, it's called the, tra uh, if the website is traumasuperconference.com and it is 90, we've interviewed 90 world leading experts. It's me and Alex from the, um, the Chronic Fatigue Clinic, which I originally co-founded mm -hmm. with Alex as the co-host. And we have everybody so we we interviewed professor bessel van der Koot, the world leading expert on trauma stephen porges is really important because of bagel polybagel theory um dr gabor Marte is the world what a uh, joe dispense dr joe dispenser the oh mind body God. expert uh dr lisa rankin the founding father of functional medicine dr jeff bland um dr kelly brogan the mit trained uh functional psychiatrist the double new york times bestselling author <laughs> Lynn McTaggart, the energy specialist, um, who the New York Times was saying, we've just got, we've just picked up Dr. David Perlmutter, who's five times New York Times bestselling mm -hmm. author, 
Nick Ortner, who's the world's most well-known EFT yeah. practitioner. We've got Paul McKenna on what's called the havening technique, uh, which is an emotional release technique, energy-based. Um, yeah, we've got some real mega names. Um, just need to, Dr. Dutta's Karazia for people who are into functional medicine, who's like a Harvard-trained clinician and researcher. Uh, William Walsh, Dr. William Walsh, like the world-leading expert, probably the one of the people who's evolving orthomolecular psychiatry. We've got Dr. Carrie Jones, who's the head of the Dutch Labs. She's the medical director of the Dutch Labs Institute for Hormone Testing. Um, she talks about, she's the one that she talks specifically about sex hormone imbalances, all the female kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so it's it's a meg it's mega. Um, Those are some serious name drops. <laughs> <laughs> it was, isn't it? Um, yeah. So we it's a Dr. Pete, Pete, did I mention Peter Levine, the somatic experiencing experts? We, Dr. Lawrence Heller, who's the author of Deve the developmental trauma book. Um, yeah, just just about anybody who's written. Uh, but we, we're doing literally ec world experts talking about blood sugar, hormones, toxins. We've got Dr. Pompa, the expert on heavy metal detox, coming on as well. Um, so it's everything that can be affecting bottom up lifestyle. Ari Witten talking about circadian rhythm, who kind of popularized, popularized it, best selling author. We've got Truly Scott, who's the, I don't know if you know, she wrote yeah, The Anxiety yeah. Solution. Mm -hmm. She's she, it's free registration gift with her. We've got Joseph McCola as well, Joe McCola. We had a couple of uh, talks on addressing specifically building resilience to COVID because of, it's such a Revolute thing, um, from thing right now, and Nick Orton is doing a practical EFT session on releasing emotional stress around having COVID and the pandemic and all the crazy stuff going on around that. So, it's we've still got some of the major names that might be stepping in as well. So, I think it could be a hundred thousand person event. There's, there's already about twenty five thousand people signed up. So, yeah, it, it's a big one. Um, but and am I right? It runs like a regular summit where you sign up and then you get a, a handful of talks every single day well it probably sounds like more more than a handful with all of those people, it's really those two speakers. for one the 90 experts stuff so you're getting two for one so from the 29th we'll probably be releasing about 10 interviews a day completely for free for seven days um and then there is an on-call weekend will be the week after um where everything will be made available for a couple two days final um, but there's a pre, there's, you can buy the summit as well. And it's, it's at a low price now. Like the cheapest you can get it is like right now. So it's traumasuperconference.com, traumasuperconference.com. You can also see links to it on my website. You can see trauma superconference. The trauma and mind body superconference is actually called trauma and mind body. And it's all about attachment trauma and how that aces the attachment trauma, how that changes your biochemistry, mind, how the mind and the psychology affects the biology, how the biology needs to be addressed to change the mental side, all the lifestyle things, everything I talked about, you, that summit, because if it was overwhelming for people, that summit, it's like, who's the world leading expert on toxins? Dr. Pompert, right, we'll have him. Who's the world leading expert on the Vegas set? Right, Dr. That is Karazin. That, yeah, so we've got a, a whole interview on every single topic. So if anybody felt like this was too much and they wanted to learn more or get a taste more, the summit is the thing. And it's probably the biggest event of the year we've got some some major people still coming as well i can't name drop anymore but it could be really okay <laughs> yeah, we'll have to tune in to see these special guests and it sounds i've listened to like every summit every year it sounds like one of the best ones if not the best and most important in my opinion so oh, i will be you. marking it in my diary trying to tune into them live but i'll probably go ahead and purchase the summit myself because um it's difficult to listen to them all and just to refer back to i think it's yeah. just some investment in yourself your future self and yeah nothing is more important in my opinion so i appreciate all of the hard work that you've been doing all of the long hours you've probably been busy these past few months with everything that's been going on as well it's been probably a hectic few months for you but i really appreciate the work that you're doing the fact that you came on the podcast today and i'm sure everyone's going to be so excited to tune in Thank you so much, Julian. It was a real, it was a pleasure to be here. And thank you for the work you're doing as well in highlighting um, such important topics as well. Thank you. Thanks, Nikki.